Hi there, this is Dr. Tom Knotts, and I've been a Christian psychologist and counselor for over 30 years. Um, I've been working primarily with people coming out of the occult and those that have been put through ritualism, mind control, programming, Satanism, devil worship, etc. Um, today in this lecture, it's a very troubling lecture. It's one I do not like to talk about. It's one I've never shared. Um, but I'm going to do this so that people can learn how to help those who have been put through ritual abuse, who have been raised in satanic families, devil worshiping, monarch mind control programming, because every family in elitism, luciferianism, satanism, witchcraft, they have to give one child as a living or dead sacrifice to Molech. And um, when they give it as a living, then that child is literally from birth created to be a temple of Lucifer. That's why I've included the Masonic Lodge. The Masonic Lodge goes through cult rituals and transferal rituals to where the pain and trauma of the ancestors is paced into the child. So here is why counselors, and I don't know why they always say, find the core, find the core. Well, you guess what? There is no core. Here is how the mind works and how it's designed. And um, and I learned this from a programmer, not a person that was programmed, but one that actually programmed people. And it was this individual's job to split the mind and train the parents how to do it to the children. And, and uh, they passed away now many years ago, but they were in their 70s when they described how they were part of the artichoke group. So here's what happens. Before the child's conceived, um, it's already dedicated to the devil so that it can be born willingly, it's already wed and dedicated as an offering unto the devil. When the child is conceived in the second month, the, because the brain of an infant cannot pass out and it cannot disassociate, you cannot disassociate until you have the mid part of the brain developed, okay? So it's not until around um, 10 to 12 months that the child can even disassociate to escape what is going to happen. So the father will hold the head of the infant and look into its eyes. And he will repeat statements like, I am God. I hold your life. Now, realize all this is going into the memory banks located in the gastrointestinal part. There's more neurons in your stomach than in your brain. There's more. There's 4,000 per square inch in your heart than in your brain. So your first memory between conception and three years of age is in your stomach. The second between three and five years of age is in your heart. And then it's after the age of five that the amygdala, the hippocampus, began kicking in and putting memories in storage up here. That's why it's all down here. And it's un, in what's called the uncognitive part of the brain or the unconscious. It's actually the no conscious part of the brain. The unconscious no part of the brain is in the abdomen. That's why it's no part of the brain. The um, unconscious mind is that which is in the heart because it's attached to the emotions. So this is very important. Since the child cannot pass out and it cannot disassociate, it forces the brain, which is developing, and more importantly, the first brain, the, the abdomen, the effulgence of the life comes from the base of the spine where it attaches to the gastrointestinal system. Because the mother will begin torturing the child while the father holds the eyes open and looks into its eyes. It sees the mother and father and it knows they're the ones giving it pain. So it knows that it's rejected and it's being hurt. It has no help. This torture will go on for hours, at least two to five hours. And what happens is in order to escape, because the infant will die unless it can take and separate that pain. So there's a life force and it'll look like a, like a ball like this that comes up. And that is the life force and it contains the conscience and literally the life force of the child. It will split. Now, if men live on the right side of the brain, it will split and it will give the left side of the brain to the darkness, to the pain, to the hatred, to the trauma. 
it will shut down the conscience on the right side so that it's not going to have memories of this or be aware. It will store it in the abdomen. That's why if you work with somebody, they'll say, well, I find the, you know, when you get to the base, you'll get all the way down below the belly button. And there will be, and I won't tell you, but that's where one of the strongholds are. So what happens is it creates a dark side and a light side. In a female, it'll put the dark side on the right. Hi, Tammy. It's good to hear from you. And it'll put the light side on the left. Now, here's the thing. Since the dark side has to be detached from the heart and the emotions, it does this in order to survive. <clears throat> it has to detach so it cannot feel. It has to detach so it has no ability to feel the rejection or the pain and the trauma. And so what it does is it splits that life force right at the right above the base, and it'll create two heads to come out. And one will work up through the central nervous system and take one side of the brain, and the other will take the opposite. Now, this will scar the brain permanently. And to accentuate this, they would take sodium pentothal into the soft part of the brain, and they would jack two to three cc's. And that would further burn the central fissure of the brain, severing the ability for the cerebral colossum and the other aspects to cross-correlate or to speak. Now, what this does is this creates two autonom auto auto autonomic systems of the brain. So what happens when it does that <clears throat> is from this point forward, all the darkness will be stored, hate, pain, every ritual that's done will be recorded over here. Living in the real world will be over here. And this is why they have no memory of it. Because the scarring, that's why they have to do the torture for so long, has to be complete. One of the things that they will do to the child also during this first ritual is they literally will take a wood-burning poker that has a tip that's like a rounded knitting needle. They will spread the anus and go in and burn six, six, six into the anus. That, uh, it horribly horribly hurts the child. They will also reach in and they have an instrument that's made that's curved and it's made out of a purple wood which has the resin in it to cause further pain and they will insert that up the anus and stroke the coccyx where the bundle of nerves for that point is causing the brain, the brain but more importantly the emotions to have a whiteout. The pain is so intense that if the life force doesn't split it will kill the child. So what happens then is in the original first torture session, they split the brain. They will then continue that to reinforce it for the first six months of that infant's life. Then they will create the dark child and the light time child, which will be two personalities. Okay. One will be called, it's a child of the devil. It'll be told this. It'll be forced to do rituals. For instance, at the ages of one and two, it'll be forced to watch as infants are murdered. When this lady, and this is going back over 20 years ago, told me that they did all these human sacrifices of infants, that you had to do one, I called her a liar. I said, there's no way. And she proved me wrong. She brought me pictures and said that we have breeders, and we pay all their bills, we support them, and when the baby's delivered, we give them $10,000. We have our own doctors. We have a very large, large connection into every facet of society. So she showed me a picture of the place where they did it and the woman holding an infant with the cord still attached. They were both naked. And that woman was 100% possessed in the picture. And she says, that was a sacrifice we just used. So I was corrected. So then in the third year, if it's a female, second year, if it's a male, they will make them go up and pound a rock into the chest to, to kill the infant. They'll make him beat him until it's dead. And they'll say, now that you're a murderer, God will never let you come near him. He hates you. He's your enemy. So they create the dark side to be a child of the devil. They tell it because of the way it's created that it will never be accepted. It will never be forgiven. And it is going to hell. So it better want to rule in hell and do as much as it can for the kingdom of darkness. It'll be raised in this. It will be sexually and physically abused from infancy. Um, 
part of the milk that they will feed. It will be from the father shoving his thing down its throat. That's why many people don't understand. They'll say, you know, I'm having these memories of, I feel like a baby and like my father shoving his penis down my throat. This can't be real. Well, actually, they do. They call it lion's milk, and they do it to the males and the females. They practice everything that is the opposite of the Bible. And so for every year of that child's life, it will go through rituals four times a year. The family will get together, and everybody will be a part of it, and everybody will be hurt. Everybody will be tortured. They all take turns. It's an all-night event. They all eat feces. There'll be times when that child will be caged in its early life and starved until it eats feces. And it will like those feces because after three to five days of starvation, it will eat whatever's put in it. And they will create animal parts in the brain. Now they start, they start disassociating the child at about 10 months. First six months is built in splitting the brain once it's completely seasoned so that it automatically will switch at certain times, then they will begin creating alternate personalities on both sides. They will take the one that's on each side and they will split it into two. They will split those two in, into two more, creating four. So they'll have four cores, and out of those four cores on each side, they will split 12, four sets of 12. So 48 out of each one. It exponentiates. And this is why it's called a kaleidoscope or a polyfragmentation. They polyfragment the mind through abuse, through trauma, everything from incest to bestiality to murder to sacrifice, cannibalization. The dark side will learn how to live off of feces, urine, blood, and flesh, human and animal. And so what they do is this is how they create it. Now, in the next lecture, I'm going to teach you on how to heal this person completely on both sides. So what will happen is they will have, over each one of those cores, besides those personalities, they will then have six with one in the middle, seven for each one of those four cores, splits, each one of the two underneath them and each one of the ones underneath them, okay? Okay. That's seven, seven sets of seven. Each one will be a completion of what's called the baphome. Each one will bring a fruition or a completion of the seven unholy spirits of the devil. Just like there are seven holy spirits of God, they create the seven unholy spirits strongholds in each one of those seven altars. And as a result, it's reinforced. And this creates the temple which is the whole goal of the Masonic Lodge, is to create you into the temple of the G, God of this world, Beelzebub. So the pyramid or the square and the compass is basically, the square is Asheroth, the compass is Satan, and Beelzebub is the God in the center. So that's the unholy trinity. So they do this to create a temple to the God of this world. It becomes a complete mind control slave because the seven unholy spirits will control the mind, the body, the soul, the will, the intellect, the emotions, and the ability for reason. All seven parts of that person will be controlled. They will grow up with these unholy spirits, and so they won't know what it's like. They will take the person that's on the light side, and they will make sure it gets into a church to where it believes it's a child of God. If it's in Hinduism, they'll take them to Krishna or one of the others. If it's in Catholicism or Christianity, they will make sure that it believes it's safe. But it's usually it's not. It's usually the spirit of Antichrist. Now, the light side does own the heart. But it's been put through these rituals also. You see, as a result, since it's coming from the original life force, it's mirrored in the opposite side. This is called twinning. So you'll have the good man, the bad man, the good girl, the bad girl, the child of the devil, the child of God. It's called the balance. And if you see the balance of Atun, uh, which is an Egyptian god, it didn't start. It's, it's actually in all religions, Roman, Grecian, Syrophoenician, Babylonian, Egyptian, to where they have the one who's the judge. If you see a picture of it, it'll be Janus. And it'll be one face going this way that's black and one face going this way, and it symbolizes two. 
the symbol for the Grateful Dead with the lightning bolt through the center of the head. It means you split the brain. That's what it means. You create a light side and a dark side, a yin and a yang. Like, for instance, in Egypt, it would be the crocodile god with a face pointing at each side, but one's dark and one's white. Okay, every religion has it. It's because they all come from Satan, except for Christianity, which comes from Jesus Christ. So then every year, even when that child's 70 years old, or that person, it will be going through those rituals to its children and its grandchildren. Now, because there's a permanent barrier between the left and right side that's almost impenetrable because of so much scarring and trauma, the left side never knows about the right and vice versa. The demons will control when that person fuges and when they don't. Fuge means the one side goes to sleep and the other side takes over like a doppelganger. Remember a lot in the Bible. He slept with both his daughters, impregnating him, and didn't even know he did it. That's called demonic disassociation. He didn't just have a one-night stand with them. He slept with them every night for weeks until they were both pregnant and carrying his own child through incest. Lot was a child of God. Lot's in heaven. So are his daughters. But you see, the devil can create strongholds in them. So in the next lecture, I'm going to teach you how you can bring that person to healing. And what you need to pray. Because here's the thing. There's one string. When you pull it, the whole system comes down. Okay? They never count on the God factor. Jesus Christ can and will heal and bring everybody. He goes in to set the captives free. He makes the shackles drop off. And um, I've tried not to go into detail um, but in the next lecture, I'm going to talk about the various aspects of the rituals and what they do and what they create inside of them. And then I'm going to get to the point where I teach you in a few lectures how to take this whole system down. Because it's important that you understand how it's built so you know how to pray to bring it down. See, the Bible says that if you ask in error, you won't receive. We have to pray knowing what we're praying and believing that God will do it. And he will. All right, this is Dr. Knotts. I pray that this finds you doing well. I pray that you have mercy and grace and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit in you so you can help those who need it. Because God is good to each and every one. Everyone's made in his image, and salvation is offered to everyone. Amen. <laughs>